Hello everyone and welcome to week four. I think we've got some really interesting readings and we had a great discussion about community last week that I really want to get to and, and bring up some of the really interesting things you guys said in your papers. Before we get too far though, I have a couple of housekeeping matters that I want to go over. First of all, I saw from the scores on the quizzes that you guys struggled on that a little bit. I looked at the answers and I looked at specifically how people answered them and what answers they were choosing and that kind of gave me the impression that maybe some of my questions asked you to judge between two or even three options sometimes were really close. So what I decided to do was go back through the quizzes, look at those options that were close, and give you credit for those. When I asked you the biggest difference that Jarvis outlined between books and the web, my intention was to underscore the similarities that he brought up. So the correct answer was the web is the only medium that can offer publicness. You know, print still can't bring people together in that way. But I think it was also fair to give you credit for the invention of print did away with anonymity and made us consider intellectual effort as private property. As freeing as we thought printing was, it actually created these, this idea of property. And so I'm glad that you guys seized on that. I'm actually glad you answered that way. The next question had a similar split among you. The biggest obstacle to journalism is a conversation. And the correct answer was the means of production and modes of communication. So in other words, you know, where we're still in a print medium, where we still have attitudes toward we are publishing the definitive version, that's going to make journalism as a conversation difficult. However, the idea that journalists have raised themselves up over the public is also a pretty big obstacle. So I ended up giving you full credit for that answer as well. The next question asked you to consider why regional newspapers are really struggling right now. This is something that Kennedy talked about. And the correct answer here was large regional and national newspapers cannot provide the hyper-local news a community needs. However, I ended up giving credit for information is now fragmented and consumed piece by piece, not all at once. Because that is a key factor that is making it difficult for even national news organizations to survive. The last question I want to go over is not one I gave you extra credit for, but it's one that enough of you got incorrect that I wanted to underscore what I was asking for. Civic journalism is the idea that journalism is about more than printing information. Um, it has strong ties to community building in the idea that journalism, because of its protected role under the First Amendment, should build a community up. And that's why the key difference between these is this idea of interpretation. Civic journalism is not just all about objectivity. Um, in fact, it's kind of an ideal that they reject to a certain extent. If this is something that is protected by the First Amendment, it means that we need to take what we're doing more seriously. It's not just about making money. Uh, in fact, I'm still a, a strong believer in the profit model of journalism because it makes journalists very responsive to their audience which is something that I think we've seen already in this term that journalists aren't very good at. So to kind of underscore how all of these concepts and ideas that were discussed in the readings this week come together in the real world, I wanted you to think about an article that Dan Gilmore published about a year ago. Um, he called it In Praise of the Almost Journalists. In fact, he said this, they're going deeper than anyone else on topics that they care about that are vital for the public to understand but which traditional journalists have either ignored or treated shallowly. Then they're telling us what they've learned using the tools and techniques of 21st century media. In talking about almost journalists, he really encapsulates what community is and how that journalists can build community while still being journalists. In these forms of advocacy journalism, the ultimate goal is to build a community, is to get people interested and excited and talking about these issues so that real change can be made. And that is only done by giving people good information. And as a postscript to what Gilmore was talking about, the Center for Public Integrity was actually honored a couple of years ago with the Pulitzer Prize for its reporting on the controversial denials of black lung benefits to coal miners. So I'm asking you then to think about a couple of questions in context of the readings of last week. What role does advocacy play in journalism today? How much of the journalism that we're looking at is advocacy? If advocacy and sharing one's opinion is part of journalism, what role does it have in building a community? With that in mind then, let's get to some of the things that you guys talked about in your papers. I think you had some great summaries and connections between these things. Um, we'll get to some specific tips that you guys offered at the end. But one of the key goals that several of you seized upon, and I think that we can take from these readings, is learning from history. There was a parallel between the scribes printing books and newspapers transferring print content to the web. 
In both cases, a new model had to be created based on demand and marketing. History often repeats itself, and we can learn from the failures and successes of others. What I think this writer really seized upon well here is what Jarvis was hoping we got from looking at Gutenberg and understanding the internet not just as a new medium, but the internet as a new way of sharing information and a way that actually harkens back closer to old traditions than the new traditions of print and permanence. So does this mean that news is dying? I really like what one of you had to say about this. I think that content of news will withstand the test of time, regardless of what form it is delivered to the public. In turn, this makes me appreciate that I went to journalism schools in the years that I did, because I can see past the death of the newspaper and can confidently go about as a journalist with faith that news will always prevail. One of the key things that I've seen as I've looked at the connection between journalism as a community is how important journalists are and how needed they are to be parts of these communities to provide good, trustworthy information. They also need to change and adapt how they operate, where they're not the sole providers of information anymore, where they rely more on the audience to help them out. But to have one person or a couple of people in a community that can be trusted to do the hard work to vet information is invaluable, and is something that we need to train journalists better to do. And you guys seized upon this as well. Um, I've got a couple of really great quotes about how journalists' roles are changing in this new media landscape. Without a doubt, the climate and business of traditional journalism practices is losing steam. We have also come to understand that in order to maintain revenue in this business, we must not treat it as such. Rather, as an effort to maintain democracy, exchange, intellect, and the ongoing pursuit of community checks and balances, we need to uphold the practice and art of journalism as an ever-evolving conversation between big media conglomerates, trained career journalists, and everyday citizens. This conversation must not be one-sided, and it will only contribute to the good of all society if each participant has an equal chance to add to the discussion. I know that last statement was really long, but I thought the author did an excellent job of summarizing the readings, but also just issuing a clarion call to journalism students about why their role is important. And what can they specifically do in this environment? How can they specifically involve every citizen, give them all an equal opportunity? We as journalists need to facilitate these conversations and community engagement. We need to bring new information to these circles and fact check common rumors that spread ever quickly. We need to keep doing journalism, but we need to start thinking outside the box of newspapers and television. I love that last line. We need to keep doing journalism just outside of the traditional realms that we've thought of. But we can never forget the cores, because as you guys have said so well, that's what really will set us apart, and that's what will make us invaluable to the communities that we belong to. Journalists are a vital, important part of the community and they need to apply their traditional training to that. That applies to this week's readings because I think we're going beyond community to look in more practical sense, to look at can we create an actual business around the idea of bringing people together. One of the key thinkers to look at when discussing hybrid models of online, print, audience, and professional is Lawrence Lessig. We're looking at just chapters of two books that he's written, The Future of Ideas, and Remix. Then I really like Remix because he takes a very practical approach to how we can use the audience. Just think of building upon what Jenkins said about how important the audience is and then actually making that into a profitable business. We'll also be looking at The Master Switch by Tim Wu. Wu is a noted internet historian and commentator and he writes about a really interesting case study of a merger that was supposed to work and supposed to be great but ended up disastrous. And I think you'll see in the reading that it was a disaster because the people behind it failed to understand some of the core principles of the Internet. All right, well, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Keep participating in the discussion. One other housekeeping matter I wanted to be sure to mention. An outline for the three sections of your wiki will be due this week on Wednesday. That's June the 3rd. By an outline, what I mean is a brief explanation of each section and the direction that you might take. It would be nice if you could include a couple of sources that you're going to use as the information there, but you don't need to write an extensive amount about each section. In fact, if you kept your entire outline to a page, that would be sufficient. This is just another way for me to give you feedback and to help you with your final project. As always, if you need me, send me an email. 
Um, I'll try to reply as quickly as I can. I really do enjoy talking with you, and I look forward to continuing this conversation next week. Have a great week.